You guys, we're so close to being done with this video series where I teach you to take a pile of parts on a desk and put them in a box and shake them around until a quadcopter comes out. And tornado. Infinite number of tornadoes and an infinite number of boxes. Eventually, would God build a quadcopter? I don't know, but I built one. And if you want to build one, there's a link to a playlist in the video description. And if following that playlist is anything like making it, don't. Just don't. But if you are following the playlist, then what we're going to do in this video is just like some last minute sort of clean up things that don't really fit in any of the other videos in the playlist. <laughs> I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. All right, guys, uh, there's a few things left that we need to do um, and they don't fit in any other videos. So we're going to just cram them in here. Um, one thing we haven't done yet is <laughs> we haven't set up smart audio in case you don't know smart audio. You might not know because it's your first uh, your first video, your first quadcopter build. Smart audio, first of all, has nothing to do with audio. Forget with it. it's named audio for a weird historical reason that doesn't have anything to do with anything. Please. Um, but smart audio means that your flight controller can control your video transmitter. Remember back in the day before televisions had remote controls? No, you don't because, okay, some of you are old enough to remember that, but most, most of you aren't. But imagine a television without a remote control and every time you want to change the channel, you got to get up off the couch. How freaking annoying is that? Well, that's what this video transmitter was like before smart audio. And you had to literally push buttons on the video transmitter to change the channel and that was freaking annoying smart audio lets you use your transmitter sticks and your goggles to change them to change the channel that the video transmitter is on which is really freaking nice you can also change your output power and if you want to go from like 25 milliwatts up to like 500 milliwatts to blast through an obstacle you can do that without having to push any buttons so you want smart audio now this is one of the places where iNav is going to kick Betaflight's butt because setting up the smart audio in Betaflight is super complicated, at least in the latest version of Betaflight. Here's what we need to do to get smart audio working. First of all, we need to go to the ports tab and we need to remember which UART the video transmitter is on. So we're going to go to UART 3. We're going to set the peripheral for UART 3 as TBS smart audio. And that should be, should be all we need to do. That was simple. To test that this is working, I'm going to plug in a battery. We have to plug in a battery because we have to have the video transmitter powered up. Then I'm going to grab my transmitter and I'm going to go to mid throttle, go to 50% throttle. And I do this so often, I can't remember. I can't actually remember the stick. I just do it with my fingers. It is yaw left and pitch forward. And you're going to get a menu pop up in your goggles. Um, if you have a little trouble doing people, sometimes people have a little trouble getting the stick command right. They'll go like, yaw left, pitch forward, and it won't be like at the same time. Just hold yaw left and then boop, pitch forward, and the OSD will show up. Once you're in the OSD, the right stick will move you up and down. Then we're going to go down to features, and then we're going to push to the right, and that'll go into the features menu. And then we're going to go to VTX SA, SA for smart audio. Uh, if you happen to one day be using a video transmitter that uses the TRAMP protocol, which is an alternative to smart audio, that would be the VTX TR menu. But most, most video transmitters use smart audio. VTX SA, we're going to go to the right. And this menu is where you can change your band, your channel, and your output power. So I'm going to change it to race band, which is R band. Race band is there. The topic of all the different bands and channels is a little bit much to get into in this video. In fact, I'm going to link in the in the video description some other videos you can watch about FPV bands and how to pick a band and how to pick channels and all that stuff. But I'm going to set us to race band and I'm going to go to channel three. Huh? The frequency is changing. but The channel number isn't changing. I think I know why. Let's go to let's go to race band channel one, and this uh, and I'm going to leave the output power alone, and then I'm going to go down to set, and I'm going to push to the right, uh, confirm yes. When I do that, your smart audio is working. The quadcopter should change channels. It didn't. Let's go back and save and reboot. 
No, invalid font. Yeah, I know. You're not kidding. That's pretty weird. Well, it didn't work. Um, let's solve the other problem. I, we, we, the other problem we have is that the OSD, the font and the OSD is all garbled. If you look at the characters in the on-screen display, there's some garbled characters that may be affecting our ability to use the on-screen menu. So let's fix that. The way that we're going to fix that is we're going to go to the OSD tab with a battery plugged in. We are going to click font manager and we're going to choose, I'm just going to choose the default font. You can pick any of these fonts that you think looks good to you but I'm gonna choose the default font and I'm gonna say upload font. That's all you gotta do, but you do need a battery plugged in in order to make that work. You cannot do it just plug. It will look like it works if you do it just plugged into USB, but it won't actually work. Aha, uh -huh. now we don't see invalid font and we don't have a lot of garbage on screen. That's good. Oh, and our battery voltage readout is working. How nice. Now let's take a look. It, race band one two three no it's still not going up that is weird let's go back go vtx sa yeah fat shark one it won't go above two it said oh it's like refusing it's just going 60 and then stopping what the hell why will it only go to fat shark one and two Try that. Set yes. And it's not working. It's not working. Uh, well, we'll um, we'll have to come back to that. Hopefully, before I release this video, smart audio is not working, and I'm not actually sure why. The next thing I decided to try is here in the iNav configuration tab. There's another place where you can change the VTX settings, and this also uses smart audio. But I thought maybe there was some problem with the OSD, and confusingly, this did work. So if you need to change your video transmitter settings, going into the configurator will work and it's still a little easier than uh, pressing the buttons on the video transmitter. So that's something. But it really confused me because this is the same smart audio that the OSD is interfacing with. If this works, then the OSD should work. And I reached out to Pavel Spikowski. Thank you again to Pavel Spikowski for helping me with this. He is an INEV developer and, uh, and he's been, just been enormous help on this build. Link to his channel down in the video description or I've been putting a comment actually at the, on the top of every video. But anyway, thanks to Pavel for helping me. We talked it through and he basically said, as far as he could tell, there must just be a bug either in INEV or in this video transmitter. <laughs> One of them then they just don't work together. So it apparently with iNav and this video transmitter, then you won't be able to change your settings in the OSD, but you can still change them here in the configurator and that's at least something. Um, we go to the OSD tab. Here in the OSD tab, you can set up the on-screen display. I'm gonna give the default on-screen display a shot because like, I'm, I'm trying a new thing, so I'm not just going to immediately assume that everything should be exactly like I think it should be. Um, it's pretty cluttered for what I'm used to as an acro pilot, but maybe this is how INAV pilots like their OSD, so I'm going to leave it alone. But just generally, you can turn OSD elements on or off by checking the box here, and you can drag them, literally just drag and drop them around on screen, and that's where they will appear on screen. So you can just basically set it up any way that you like. Uh, the video format, auto, PAL, or NTSC needs to match what your camera has. Uh, if you set it to auto, it will usually get it right. But if you have no OSD, or if like the bottom of the OSD, if you have something at the bottom of the screen and it's getting chopped off and you're not seeing it on your goggles, you may try changing from PAL to, from auto to PAL or NTSC. You have to save and reboot and you have to completely power cycle the whole quad. So you'll need to unplug USB before for that to take effect. But that's that setting. Current meter, the current meter, I don't think this quad has a current meter. We'll turn that off. We can't have current and milliamp hours if we don't have a current meter. Oh, GPS. Now it is a, yeah, I wanna know the GPS speed, heck yeah. Altitude? Nah, we're gonna leave that up. Artificial horizon? Sure. Some people like to put the longitude and latitude in their DVR so that if they crash, they can go back and review the DVR and see what their last known latitude, longitude and latitude was before they crashed. I think it takes up a ton of space on the on the screen, but that's your call. 
If you're going to fly autonomous flight, you really want a direction home arrow. It's surprisingly easy to lose your orientation when you're flying in, uh, and not know which way, literally just not know which way home is. And then you're like, oh, I think it's this way. No, I'm getting further away. Direction home is, is a pretty good idea. Distance to home. Yeah, it's nice to know distance to home, right? How far away are you? Well, we'll save that and we'll leave that alone for now. Well, there's more that we could play with in iNav, like the mission control tab lets you set up GPS waypoint missions and have the quad fly the mission without you even doing anything that's not technically allowed according to the FAA, but you could do it as long as you're always there at the controls ready to take over. But we're not going to dive into that stuff. The only other thing that I'm going to do before I take this out to fly, or as far as you know, is figure out why smart audio is not working. And I'll put that in the video right about here. Joshua from the future here. Actually, you already saw that part, but there is one more thing that you do need to do. Um, many of you will already have finished this build with Betaflight, and now you're trying out iNav, in which case you already put, put your quad back together. But if you are actually just skipping the Betaflight part and doing the iNav part, I didn't actually tell you how to finish, like put the top plate on your quad and put your camera in, and you actually just haven't finished assembling it yet. So at this point, the next video you should watch is part 12 in this playlist, Final Assembly. That's going to be the same whether you're doing Betaflight or iNav. And then come back here and watch the very next video, which is The Maiden. Uh, now I'm ready to go fly the quadcopter. That's going to do it for this video. Happy flying, everybody.